You were born with individual strengths and a unique purpose. Don't let fears, false beliefs, or life's happenings diminish your influence. It's time to live and lead for impact. Host Kirsten Ross, expert of transformation, will help you defeat the drama and overcome the trauma that can stop you in your tracks. You'll gain focus, find confidence, and take bold action. Unleash passionate, purposeful you. Let's go. Welcome to the Live and Lead for Impact podcast. I'm Kirsten Ross, your host, and I'm really excited that you're here. And you're in for a treat. I have a great guest today. His name is Matt Woodrum. He's married with three daughters, is passionate about sending a call out to men to understand the value that they bring to their families. As someone who grew up without a dad and worked within the prison system, Matt has seen firsthand how growing up without a dad can negatively affect our children. His business is Wrestling with Fatherhood. I love that name. And the website, which will be on the podcast notes for today, is www.fatherhood.com. So wrestlingwithfatherhood.com is what that stands for. So welcome, Matt. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I'm excited for the interview. Yeah. Well, I am really excited to dive a little deeper into what you're up to. And then you have an incredible story about why you do what you do. So let's just start since I just said the name of your business and a little bit about what you're doing. Um, what is it? What What's the impact that you're motivated to make in this world? So, yeah, uh, so my entire business, my entire focus is all about equipping men to discover their strengths, understand their value, accomplish their goals, and live out their dreams to become their children's biggest heroes. So Mm -hmm. I am really on a mission to help men to understand that everything that they say and everything that they do completely impacts their children's lives. At the same time, everything that they don't say and everything that they don't do completely matters to the children. I love that. You know, and I think it's just something that happens in our society. I think too often men don't, they kind of minimize their impact and don't realize the difference that they can be making in their kids' lives uh, by investing in them. And, uh, you know, whether they're investing or not, they're kind of minimizing and saying, eh, it's not that big a deal. And so I'm so grateful that you are out there and making sure that men realize that they're 100% valuable. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's crazy when you turn on the media, when you turn on the TV and movies and listen to music, how undervalued men and dad's rules are in life today. Yeah, that uh, reversal that's happened in our media, definitely. Uh, with with men, yeah, they're sometimes the bubbling idiots in shows and, <laughs> and things like that. And how unfortunate because, yes, men are important. So let's talk a little bit about um, the incredible life experience that you've, you've but definitely been through some challenges. So um, these experiences though, have led you to the great work that you're doing. So why don't you share a bit about your story? Yeah, definitely. So kind of the 50,000 foot view is that I was adopted when I was four. The reason I was adopted was because of abuse, neglect, kind of anything that you Mm -hmm. can put under that umbrella happened to my sister and I. And so, you know, as a matter of fact, my first words were actually Scooby-Doo, if that kind of gives gives you an idea. And so... Then when I was seven, my mom and the man that I called dad, they got a divorce. And, mm. you know, it was because of a failed business. He wasn't sure how to handle a family and and love. And then, you know, I saw him once uh, when I was 12. And then when I was about 16 or 17, my dad ended up actually ended up taking his own life. Mm. And I, I went to the funeral and it was one of the toughest things I've ever mentally and emotionally had to do. Um, my mom remarried my stepdad. My stepdad is a great man. He's a good Christian guy, elder in my home church. But we didn't have that father-son relationship like every boy desires to have, you know, when you get a new dad or when you get, you know, a new man steps into the picture. Mm-hmm. When you fast forward, I had a lot of different college failures and just was kind of down on my luck and and was really you know man like why am i here why am i on this earth and i met my wife at that time and as a matter of fact my wife is a speech language pathologist she Mm -hmm. was about to walk into her master's program Uh, my wife was one of those people 
and and still is, you know, very intelligent, you know, 3.8, 3.9 GPA, uh, took school very seriously. And here I am, somebody who had just failed out. And that's actually one of the biggest things that I told her when I first met her, as I said, her name's Jocelyn. Jocelyn, I'm a huge failure. You deserve somebody who is so much better than who I am. Mm. And she turned back to me and she said, Matt, anyone who talks to you for five minutes can tell that you're intelligent and that you're passionate. And that was life changing for me. It really motivated me to, you know, understand, you know, my own learning style. Mm -hmm. I went and got my associate's degree in psychology and went and got my bachelor's degree in counseling. I had, you know, three daughters of my own. And through all of that, you know, I was able to forgive my dad and forgive, you know, not being around and, and some of the different experiences and stuff. And so one of my friends said, man, you've, you've got such a passion for fatherhood and was able to forgive your own dad and, and you love your own girls and, and you're not letting these different things cripple you. And they said, why don't you take a look at this coaching thing where you can come in and that you can preach this message to men on how valuable that they are Mm -hmm. and that they have an essential role into our family system. Mm -hmm. Such important work. And, you know, thank God for your wife then, girlfriend. (laughs) But this strong woman spoke into your life so that you could feel your value. And your significance and, and, and then, uh, yeah, that gave you that, it sounds like that little transformation in your own life that put you on this path. Thank God. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. So, uh, it is amazing. You have been through so much and, you know, like they say, we turn our trials into our triumphs when we use what we've been through in the service of others. So thank you so much again, I'll say for the amazing work that you're doing. So when you look back to some of the outcomes that you've helped create in this world, can you think of one story, one impact that you made that really fuels your passion or keeps you going through those tougher times? Yeah, uh, I have a couple. The first one is every time that I come home, every time that I wake up and I get a chance to see all three of my girls. Mm. It's a huge reminder that I have this opportunity, that I have the privilege of giving someone, this human being, mm-hmm. the dad that I never had. And mm-hmm. that is something that is is very powerful. powerful. It's inspiring. It's encouraging. Uh, One of the other things is I had the privilege of doing prison ministry for four years. Mm -hmm. And when I would talk to them, I would talk to them about no matter what your past is, no matter what mistakes you've made, that you can continuously take small steps forward. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're going to turn around and you're not even going to recognize the person that you were. Instead, you have a chance to change your family's history. And, you know, you can start today. You can start now like you know as soon as you're hearing this podcast Mm -hmm. understanding how important you are and and that your children need you Mm -hmm. awesome so what are you focused on next what's the next big thing where are you taking this work uh yeah so my next big thing is i'm going to be starting up some mastermind groups where we're going to have a couple of different communities of men where men can come together and they can share their passions, their hopes, their dreams, and that we can instill that value into men and help them to understand that they are, you know, important to our family system. You know, it's funny, we, uh, when I did prison ministry, I learned an alarming statistic, and that was 88% of the men and women that are in our prison system grew up without a good dad or at least a good male role model. And so that was one of those things that was definitely life-changing in in my life. And so I want to bring together this community of men so that we can lock arms with one another and we can say, hey, you know what? We are valuable. We can do this. We can raise up great sons and daughters. Oh, I love that. You know, I think, you know, we're all designed to live in community and lock arms, like you said. And, uh, you know, I think men have, I mean, you can speak to this more than me. I just know by reading about it. But, you know, men, I think, have a tougher time being vulnerable. You know, even, you know, they they feel like they have to be the strength and probably it's tougher, right, to be vulnerable, share fears, hopes, dreams, all that kind of stuff. 
Absolutely. You know, you walk into different organizations and they're almost always filled with women who are, you know, that love this community and men are kind of the, you know, on the outside kind of looking in and, you know, it's, it's sad that men don't have that community to, to come together and to inspire and encourage one another. Uh, you know, I was, I was brought up in church and one of the things that I remember in any and all the churches that I've ever been to is the women were there and they would pack in and they would support each other emotionally, physically, mentally, Mm -hmm. and help build one another up. And I think it's time that, as men, we understand, hey, you know what, that community is something that is very important for us as well. Yes. Yep. I love it. So what's been your biggest internal or external challenge that you've had to overcome? And how did you overcome it? Oh, my biggest internal battle is most of my battles are almost always within. Mm -hmm. And I think that I face the what I call the imposter syndrome, where I don't know. And I feel it's time. I I feel at times that I'm not good enough Mm -hmm. to make or lead this, uh, what I'm calling an evolution. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as somebody who grew up without a dad, how am I supposed to lead a group of men and tell them how they, they can personally develop so that they can lead their children when I don't even have that role model. I'm wanting to be a role model for something that I don't have any idea about. And, you know, one of the things that really helped me to overcome that and that continues to help overcome that is that when I was when my wife was pregnant with our first child, I asked my father in law, I said, What is the greatest piece of advice that you can give me about raising a great kid and a, and a good daughter? And he said, Matt, the biggest piece of advice that I could give you is that you're going to make mistakes. Mm, yeah yeah there's no perfect parent (laughs) (laughs) yeah definitely and and I looked at him and I said you know wow like how is that supposed to be encouraging and he Mm -hmm. goes once you understand that you're going to make mistakes Mm -hmm. then you will figure out how to how to be better and to walk forward and to become a better dad each and every single day and that's something I really value and I love and then the other thing that really helps me to overcome these fears and this you know, the feeling of not being good enough is my wife reminds me every single day that I am capable, that I am smart enough, and Mm -hmm. that, you know, I need to listen to my own message sometime about it doesn't matter what your past failures are. Mm -hmm. What does matter is the steps that you take forward. It doesn't matter what your past family's failures are, but instead it matters what you do today to make a better tomorrow. Wow. So, you know, again, I'm going to say you have an amazing woman by your side. (laughs) And I think that uh, that, you know, you are awesome as well. But it sounds like you have this amazing (laughs) woman who is speaking into your life still got you on this path, keeping you solid there, overcoming your internal, uh, you know, that internal voice that's trying to shoot you down and uh, helping you and right by your side, getting you uh, moving towards making this big impact in the world that is so, so so needed. Um, So what words of wisdom do you have for others who want to make their impact? You know, the biggest thing that I would say is that, you know, a lot of people tend to think that we are a product of whatever our environment or the event is. And I would say while that plays a part, that is not the entire story. Whatever you want to accomplish, you are absolutely capable of accomplishing that thing. No matter what your parents did or did not do, you, whoever's listening to this, can change the very fabric of your family's history. Mm-hmm. It's not a, it, you know, it doesn't matter what your, your, your failures were in the past. Yes, they're, they're learning experiences, but those are not what defines you. Thomas Edison uh, once said it's not that he failed 9,999 times, but he got 9,999 lessons. And when we change that mentality of understanding that our failures don't define us, they can help us to move forward. You know, I've got a friend named uh, Kent Julian uh, who has uh, what he calls an equ- the equation of life. And that equation is E plus R equals O. 
E stands for our environment or the events in our life. These are the things that we cannot control. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, my my dad walking out of my life, my parents getting the divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and there's so many different cases of different people that have events happening to them. Uh, people who grew up in a town that's infested with drugs and alcohol. But what's fun or what's funny is that there's that R. And that R stands for our response to any given situation. You know, we have a choice to make each and every single day. We can make the choice to copy and to to follow in the footsteps of, you know, like my dad who wasn't mm-hmm. around. And so I could have that excuse or I can own my response and I can own my responsibility and I can change the outcome. Mm, so mm-hmm. E plus R equals O. And say that person's name again. Uh, his name is Kent Julian. Okay. Well, I'll put his information on the show notes too. Great. Well, those are wonderful words of wisdom and it sure, uh, you know, it, Hopefully people are hearing that and feeling empowered in their own lives because when we think that we're stuck or we have to stay on a one specific path, uh, you know, if we're going through life as a victim, we don't have a lot of uh, power to change. But when we own it and realize that we do have the opportunity to take responsibility and and own our actions and reactions to our circumstance, that's that's where the power lies. Taking life into our own hands. Exactly. You know, one time at camp, there was somebody who came up to me and I had just got done telling my story and and didn't leave out a lot of the the details and, and got real personal with it. And the person came up to me and they said, you know, you've got two options. And, and this is what I would tell, you know, uh, your viewers and your, you know, the people who are listening to your podcast and, and who are wanting to get motivated and, and encouraged. And that is when you look at your story, you have two choices. You can either take that and you can go, man, my life stinks and, and mm-hmm. I've had so many horrible things. And then you can use that as an excuse to keep on just doing whatever it is that you're doing. Use mm-hmm. it as an excuse to, you know, pick up the bottle. You can use it as an excuse to, to you know, uh, further your addictions and stuff like that. So you can mm-hmm. either use it, your story as your as an excuse or you can turn your story and turn it into a testimony. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Well, I tell you, the whole time you're talking, I mean, your passion absolutely comes through. Uh, you know, it's so clear that you are, you know, in the zone of <laughs> what you were made <laughs> to do in this world and that you are so excited to you know, create communities of men who are locking arms and realizing and then living out the value that they bring in their families and in their communities. And, you know, I'm so excited to see what happens over the next year, five years, 10 years, uh, you know, the impact that you're going to make and and how wide it spreads. So just as a, a last, uh, I guess one last question, you know, what, how do you stay motivated during those tough times? Is it your wife again? (laughs) (laughs) I I, she definitely plays a a big role in that. She's, she's a huge part of my world. She's, she's, you know, absolutely uh, as a a person of faith, uh, you know, God definitely is that, that big encourager. And, and he blessed me with a, an incredible wife that, that is a, a lot more than what I could ever imagine. Uh, but you know, what, what keeps me motivated, uh, you know, I would say is one of two things. And one, it's the four years in prison ministry that I took and Mm -hmm. going into prisons and talking to the men who grew up without dads and, and, you know, were products of their environment. And then, you know, I had a, I had the chance to go and into a woman's prison and I actually taught anger management. So if you can think of this, I'm a man going into a woman's prison teaching anger management to a group mm-hmm. of women mm-hmm. who are probably really mad at men. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, it was pretty incredible getting a chance to talk to those women and talking to them and hearing the pain and the hurt that mm-hmm. men had caused them, their dads had caused them and, mm-hmm. and these different things. And so it just lit a fire under me that, that I want to tell men, I want to show men that 
you know, that they are strong, not just physically strong, but they need to be mentally strong, emotionally strong, that they have value, that they can accomplish their goals, they can accomplish their dreams. And when as men, when we do that, we can change the very fabric of the place that we're living. It goes from anywhere from the, you know, the poverty level all the way up into politics. And mm-hmm. when we understand that, when we implement that value into our sons and daughters, it'll change the world. Awesome. Wow. Wow. I, I really can't wait, uh, like I said, to see the impact that you make through the work that you're doing. So you guys go check it out. It's Wrestling with Fatherhood. So that's www.fatherhood.com. So not www, but www, which stands for wrestling with www.fatherhood.com. And again, I will have the link on the show notes for today's episode and go check him out. And if you are a man who is looking for a community to lock arms with, uh, get in touch and jump into one of these masterminds. I know it is going to be a powerful transformational experience for everyone involved. So thank you so much, Matt, for joining me today. And uh, man, just keep up your great, important work. And thank you for turning your trials into your I always say triumphs. Test, you say testimony. Your trials <laughs> into testimony. So I, I'm so grateful that you're that you've done that. Uh, thank you so much for the encouragement, and uh, you know I will definitely keep chucking alone uh, along, and and uh, the and thank you for having me on your podcast. All right, and for those listening, you guys also get that fire going and uh, surround yourself with the people who will uplift you and help you towards making your big impact. So in the meantime, get out there, make it a great day and make your big impact until next time. 